that's gentle and that's the kind of dark. Yes. Okay, because when I say that, I'll say to people, people say, what kind of cancer do you mean with a man? Well, if it's between your head and your toes, and women don't get it, you understand where I've got the condition, you say. <laughs> My father passed with this, and it brings me again into this, this month of April. <coughs> My father's been passed since 1971. Many, many years, and that's why I do this work. So this is how I wanted to, by the way, somebody to break the leg as I'm talking to you, you see. Yeah. yeah? It's the, uh, I'm not sure if it's a tibia or a fibula, but it's the front one, yes. and it's on the right leg. It's just below there, and uh, it's okay, because I was talking to my, uh, my nephew, who's broke the, the, the other one at the back. This is the large one <coughs> that comes across. So it's brought over to you at the situation. There must have been a problem at the time, because, uh, because I feel like it was going to have a plate in it. You see? Yes, I'd rod put into it. Do you understand me? Yes. Yeah, because I'm looking at it. I've got a dog with us. Uh, I don't know why this dog came into the energy field, but to very much help you in the situation. A dog? Yes. Yeah. Okay. A big dog. Uh, yeah, I've got a dog that mm. came into the energy field. Um, mm. We also said earlier, when there's animals and children, we have no fear to tread. Mm. Uh, but this is a bit, by the way, would you watch your knee uh, as well? Because I'm talking to you. You have a slight problem. I've got to go to have mine done tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah? yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. it's almost at the back of the patella. Uh, so I'm a child's coffin that's been brought to me. A lovely little boy. I've got a little boy that's been shown. I see as a boy, not by colour, just by the hair that's been brought there. So I'm not looking particularly old within this. There was obviously a compression of the lungs, so I don't know why, but this is what they showed me. So I, I, but I see that as if, as if the door is open. I, I've gone into an haberdashery shop. We don't see haberdashery okay. shops now. And I brought to this lady within this. And, and Emma Simpson, I must give it Emma Simpson, that came across to you as well. And uh, I, I don't, I've got a lady, uh, this is the name of Veronica, darling, so I have to give you that yes. name, because I'm just in the name of Veronica. And, and, and that, she's a lady who was like a lady, darling. Yes. I thought like, I thought like them, I thought like them, what's names on television? Lady. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I could be the little fat one, you know. <laughs> so simply, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Um, just simply, I, many years ago, very quickly, I saw a grave, and on it was sort of a few words, and a few words have always been important. Uh, it was a May back, maybe 25 years ago. I went to a grave in, in, in I go to graves because there's nobody there. You know, we've all moved on. But on it was a quick inscription. It said simply this: No earthly hold, no lingering gaze, no sadness of parting, nor sore amaze. But softly, gently, we must all slip away from earth's dim twilight out into endless day. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I do this work is to bring together those who have gone beyond physical death and now live in the realms of eternal light. There but a heartbeat away to win again. Thank you. Thank you. So what what did he what did he kind of get right then? Uh, my brother's been in an accident. Yeah. And um, his tip came out of his leg at the front. Like exposed fracture? Yeah. Wow. And he had um, a titanium rod. And he's got a limb. Right. In fact, it's going back, isn't it? It's a bit of habit done. Right. Really. Steve seems to do a lot of kind of illness. Physical affliction stuff. The times that I filmed with me, that seems to be his kind of big thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody had a bad neck, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a bad neck? I've got the bad neck. Oh, it was you, wasn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm the bad neck. Um, what did What did you reckon? Then? Right. And did he pick that out? Right. 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 <laughs> when he went up and down, and we went, oh gosh, that's what she says. That, like, that's up and down. what it feels like for you, kind of like. Right. Interesting. Well, my husband had recently passed away when he came and didn't expect to get a message. And he was absolutely spot on. Right, and Everything. this time? It was um, uh, November 2007 when my husband died. And right. It was early in last year when I came with my friend. And uh, I, I just couldn't believe it. You know, it, and it, it was such a comfort. It was a real lift for me, you know, to know that he was there. And when he'd finished, he came down the aisle of the church and he kissed me and he said, that's not from me, that's from him. 
That was right. wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Was that at this church? Yes. Right. Yes. And I have another friend who had a wonderful message from him as well. And she doesn't come to this church normally. And she said, if ever he comes again, you must tell me. So I always have to give her a message when right. he's coming. Yeah. Right. And, it, and it was... How did you know it was from your husband? Was it, was it very specific? Or yes, something? very specific. He, he described him and little things that I, I can't remember in detail, but little things that no one else would have known, and I knew it was him. Mm. But it, it, it was such a comfort, you know, to know that they're still there. Because you, yeah. you do have doubts. And I come here every Sunday, and I come to special evenings like this. Okay, no. uh, what, how do you see this then? Is it, is it a, a religious thing, a spiritual thing, or just yeah, interesting? Yes, spiritual. Or... Um, yeah, it is. It's, it's quite peaceful actually. Um, so being quite new to it, but very interesting. Right. It seems to attract a lot of women as well. <laughs> A lot of the times that I'm filming, there's, there's an awful lot of women. Yeah. Why do you think that might be? Blokes are too proud to do consider these things, are they? I don't know. I think men are a bit... Um, it's getting a out of the way. Yeah. yeah. No, it's the, the blokes that do come seem, seem quite defensive. You know, yeah. There's a lot of arms folded and, mm. you know, yeah. not just because they're cold. No, that's it. Like, oh, we're like, oh, <laughs> it's very, very good, very good. We was like, gosh, I'm just like, oh my gosh, you never kept it. <laughs> okay. so, so, it came. We were at um, Mansfield last time, and there was just two women sitting right behind me, and then. Um, he, he said, oh, I'm you know, going to pay this off across the chest, but I don't really want to say more than that. And, and she'd had like a double mastectomy about a month before, you know, and he got so much wrong. But again, a lot of physical ailments. So. I don't know. I mean, how useful is it? It's, it's one thing he's kind of picked it out for you. Isn't it? It's, um, it makes you feel better to think that there's people on the other side who... You know, they're coming through and think they are okay. Mm. You know, it's, it, right. it's nice. I think so anyway. Have you right? So you got something tonight? Yes, yeah. yeah. How accurate was that? And it was very accurate. Yeah. yeah. What, what well, this? I've often had a message from Stephen, and it's always spot on. Right. Interesting. Mm. So, what 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 was the sort of nature of it then, and how how specific was it? Well, he mentioned my healing. Yeah. Right, and I do healing, and um, he mentioned uh, the names of two uncles, and and um, one of them had lost half of their finger, the small finger, and he, um, that was evident. Right, because I guess he'd know that you're into healing, but wouldn't necessarily no, know that no, you're... No, he wouldn't, would he, he wouldn't. No, because he, he only comes every now and again to the church. He doesn't know anything about me or right. what I do at the church, you know. So, right, um, and somebody's finger missing is pretty specific, really. Very specific, yeah, yeah. and it went with the name as well. Yeah. So he gave the name and the finger missing. Mm. Yeah, it's intriguing. Why are you a septic? A septic. Um, yeah, I'm, it's intriguing. It's the, the, he, he certainly got something that. I mean, I, I, obviously, I'm filming a little kind of I don't know what you want to call it a documentary about him really, yes. and sort of following him to a few different. Uh, venues, churches yeah. and venues. You call yourself a venue or a church, or what, what's the word? Well, this is a church. That's a church. Yeah. Okay. But it's a venue for him. It's a venue it's for right. Venue, right. You know. Okay. So, so Steve doesn't necessarily share the same, you know, spiritual outlook as this church. No. He's just no, coming he, in to kind of yeah. demonstrate or. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And he believes 
what we believe in a life after death. Um, but he, and he's not into religion. Right. Uh, so w what is your church then? This is a spiritualist church. Um, spiritualism is a religion. And is it, is it in any way affiliated to or have any of the beliefs of Christianity? Or? No. Right. Okay, no. Now that's quite a... I think a lot of people, I guess, have got wrong then. Yes. Well, there is a, there is, um, a Christian spiritualist church, right? Um, there is one, uh, I've been to one, and they have pictures of Jesus. And we believe in Jesus, but we don't believe that he died on the cross to save us. Right. So he was a prophet. But, but... yeah. We think that he was a medium, a wonderful healer and a medium. Right. Um, but we, we just don't agree with the concept that he died on the cross to save us. You know, no one can save you. Like, we don't, but, well, I personally don't believe that Roman Catholics can go to a priest and say, I've done this, and he absolved them of the sin because he is only human. Yeah. He, you know... Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's just, the, these are just the differences in religion. So tell me about tonight then. Well, it's like, you know, pretty much anyway, you prepare yourself up for it, you never know what to expect. You know, people may turn around and say, well, you've got the people who sat in the studios, but I don't know the people who have spoken to, but I certainly don't know anything about their lives. And what you have to do, you get a certain piece of information, which you've got no control over, but you get a certain piece of information. And um, it means nothing to me. Uh, and often the case, it, it, you know, it's, well, if you knew what it was, and you know about other people, and you've got enough living in your own life without knowing about yeah, other people's situation. So really, I, I thought it's nice, and, and as the people open up, and uh, not everybody has the uh, ability how to open up without telling you things. You don't want them to tell you things, but what you want to do is that they feel relaxed in the environment, and uh, and if they're relaxed in it, the, then the, the information is passed to them. Mm. Well, you got some. Um the people that I spoke to, you were very specific. Fingers missing, mm -hmm. family names, plates in legs. Yeah. People passing over. It seemed very specific for these people. Yeah, well, it's... It two is. women behind me. Yeah. Then you, had, you had two women last time behind Yeah. You were kind of... seemed to be very accurate with them. Well, it's the thing that I pick up, which I, I don't think... Everybody picks different things up. That's why I find it peculiar, where people feel they're in competition with each other. Uh, and we're not in competition. Everybody picks up little pieces, only small pieces. Some might pick up a little bit more. But anyway, it's a gift, and it just opens the door slightly, very, very slightly. So I find it peculiar when uh, people are seeking fame and fortune, which is all an illusion. And the reality of it is, is that if everybody picks a little piece up, then it wipes away the tears of sadness. And it just leaves the door slightly, slightly open. And hopefully that our work takes a little bit further than other people who believe they have the answers, but in reality close the door, and the door is a door to the mind. So that's simply what we do. So it's really, the better we can work together, the more help and support we can do. And it's not about ourselves, it's about helping people who've been like me, when you've lost somebody very, very close, and that is the motivation, the stimuli. It has nothing to do with self-glorification, and that seems to be a disease that's affecting people in spiritism at the moment.